Hi everyone, so today I'll be talking about the MapleSim connector and how you can generate Simulink component block from within MapleSim. So to get started and to talk a little bit about MapleSoft and what we do here, MapleSim is, or, or Maple, sorry, is a symbolic mathematical computation engine based on over 30 years of research and development resulting in over 6,000 mathematic functions, an intuitive user interface. And MapleSim is an advanced system level modeling and simulation tool that applies modern techniques to dramatically reduce model development time, provide greater insight into system behavior, and produce fast, high, fidel high fidelity simulations. Now, after a model is created in MapleSim, users have the ability to compile and run it in Maple, taking advantage of all Maple functions to perform tasks such as optimization, signal processing, parameter sweeps, and more. And in addition, users also have access to basic C code. So extensions of this code are available for a variety of software tools as additional connector toolboxes. And these connector toolboxes provide users with a smooth integration of Maple Sim models to their existing workflow or for hardware in the loop real-time applications. In fact, for many of our customers, creating the model in MapleSim is the only way to create a simulation that is fast enough for use in real-time applications. So these following slides focus on the MapleSim Simulink connector and how to generate S function blocks. So the MapleSim connector provides all the tools you need to prepare and export your dynamic system models to Simulink as X function blocks. You can create a model in MapleSim, simplify it in Maple by using an extensive range of analytical tools, and then generate an S function block that you can incorporate into your Simulink toolchain. You can also use these tools for exporting mathematical models that you've created in Maple as S functions. And various options allow you to use the C code generation feature in Maple to create code libraries of your MapleSim model for implementation in other applications. The MapleSim connector allows any MapleSim model to be exported to Simulink, including custom components and systems with dis discrete events. Models are generated as functions with multi-input and multi-output with user-definable parameter masks so that the Simulink block can be used immediately once created. Input ports are designated as non-feed-through input ports if they do not affect the output. Now, this is an important step that really helps Simulink deal with algebraic loops between different Simulink blocks more effectively. We also have the ability to export any lookup tables that are being used within the model and this is so that parameters can be modified between simulation runs without having to recompile or pay the computation cost of having to recompile the model. Everything mentioned so far can be performed using a built-in Maple app that can be accessed via the MapleSim apps tab. And I'll show you this later on in a demo. This app provides an easy to use template allowing the user to enter important parameters select their options and click a button to export without having to code anything. And for advanced users looking for custom application development, the Maple API provides pro programmatic access to all functionality. So this is a step-by-step -step flow of the code generation and I'll walk through this process with some example screenshots from within the MapleSim environment in the following slides. So you start by creating a MapleSim model you specify the section for an S function block is a subsystem. You can use the Simulink component block generation app where a C code and the .m file are automatically generated. You can execute the M file to generate a library containing the S function block and then you create the Simulink model. So the first step is to set up the model within MapleSim. And this is an example of a top level system. This is a simple RLC circuit. So the basic structure of exporting a model is the subsystem seen here. 
And within MapleSim, there are different port types. So there are physical ports, such as electrical ports, as you see here in this model. There is also capabilities to add additional ports, such as hydraulic and mechanical ports, as well as signal ports, such as Boolean, real, and integer. When generating code for subsystems, any ports must be real ports or real inputs or real outputs. And the, and the ports of the subsystem basically define the inputs and the outputs of your generated code. So in this case, we're using current as the input here, and we want to measure voltage as the output. So we have a voltage sensor that will give the signal output port. So in addition to inputs and outputs, generated code may have user modifiable parameters defined for it. So by default, parameters defined on the subsystem are selected to be modifiable on the generated code. So in this case, the subsystem parameters of the RLC block are added here, and these will be modifiable when exported. So in general, the fewer the parameters specified to be modifiable, the less time it takes to generate the code, and also the faster the, resu the resulting code will run. And as a side note, not all parameters can be selected to be modifiable. Parameters that change the actual structure of equations, for example, adding or removing a variable from the entire system, will automatically be removed in this process. In terms of initialization, MapleSim's exported code assumes that all discrete events initialized to the same values, uh, initialized to the same values that they would in a MapleSim model. For example, if there was a clutch in your model, uh, it would initialize to be in a lock state, as we would in a parked car. In the generated code, it would assume the locked position or configuration. So since the MapleSim's exported code obtains the initial conditions from the initialized MapleSim model, it follows that the code can only be exported for models that can be simulated, or at least that can be initialized. So if there are any errors, or if you're unable to run or simulate your model within MapleSim, you won't be able to export the code. So once a subsystem has been selected, we can see the input and output options within the Maple application. We can also see the parameters and select which ones we want to be physical within the S function block. Here are some options for the S function block generation. The option to export lookup tables as external CSV files can be selected here. You can also select the level of code optimization, constraint handling, and there are also event handling options. So once the options have been selected, the code is ready to be generated and you can select generate and compile X function. Immediately within the template, the C code is generated and MATLAB and Singlimp will open. Uh, you can also select generate S function code, no compile. That will give you the option of just viewing the code within MapleSim or the Maple application that you're working within. And this does not open um, the MATLAB and Simu Simulink applications. At this point, I'm going to jump into MapleSim and show you how to generate the code there. Exit. So here I have a Stuart platform. Um, so with the input specifying the X, Y, and Z position of the platform, and the outputs are the legs. So if I run this model, while that's running, I'm going to jump in and show you some of the structure of the subsystem. So here I have six identical classes, which are my legs. If I jump in even further, so here I have a universal joint. Um, so this is at the bottom of each leg. So my results just popped up, but I can show you those in a minute. 
Here I have a prismatic joint. So this is the extension of each leg. And this is a spherical joint. So this connects to the platform. In between them, I have um, rigid body components and these allow me to specify the mass and the rotational inertia. We go back up. Oh, no. Here, uh, into the platform. Um, I simply have a lumped mass, a lumped mass with, again, inertia. And I'm specifying a uh, just a simple positional input. So let's take a look at check these up. What that actually looks like. So here's the animation from the simulation. So that's what we just talked about. Uh, we talked about the different joint connections, um, each of the six legs and my platform. And my plots. So each, each of the legs plotted against each other. And these are my outputs. So at this point, I want to take... That's where I am. There we go. Um, so I want to jump into the Simulink component block generation. So see, these are some of um, where the screenshots were taken from um, within the slides I was showing you. We can open this. So it just takes a couple of moments to load up. Um, what I want to do in the meantime so here is the subsystem that we were working with. And as that loads, so actually if we go back, I don't know if it'll let me select main. So we can actually see within this application the model that we are working on. We select the subsystem. And it's important at this point to hit load, load selected subsystem, as this populates all of the information into the application. Here we have our configuration options, so inputs. And we see that it's populated our X, Y, and Z inputs. Our outputs are each of our legs. The parameters are optional, um, and this is where we check off if we want to export them. So let's say export, 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 and our code export options. So these are all entirely optional. Um, some of these are more advanced, and we don't need to actually select any of these to run or generate the code. Um, there are options for diagnostics if you are wanting to get a little bit more involved. For today, we're going to leave these blank to keep things nice and simple. Um, here's your export, so your directory, uh, your block name. So I'm going to go SGPX. I've run this several times now, so naming it XGP won't work. And as I mentioned, you can generate a function code without compiling it. Uh, this works if you don't currently have um, the compiler set up, or if you do, generating and compiling S, S function. So here you can see it's evaluating, it's running. So this takes a few moments um, to generate, and then we can take a look at the code. Uh, while that's running, I just want to make a point of letting you know about our options for where to get help. So if you are familiar and already using MapleSim, the help function or the help feature in MapleSim I can minimize this, is right in here. So help, MapleSim help, and you can search anything about Simulink. For those of you that aren't currently uh, using MapleSim but want to know a little bit more information, going to 
So it's currently running, I wanna make sure. Okay. I can drag this up. Our website is a great resource for finding out more about the toolboxes, about MapleSim Connector, and just getting started. So I actually came uh, to this website myself to set up the MapleSim Connector and figure out what I was doing. So this is the Getting Started Guide, but there's a lot more resources on how to use Simulink, how to go through some of those options, how to figure out more about the code export, the more of the advanced code export that we didn't talk about today. And some of this can be extremely helpful. So I definitely recommend either if you're new to MapleSim and the connector and looking for more information or you're looking for something a little more advanced, definitely use these as a resource. So it looks like our model is just about ready. So Simulink's opened up here and we can see that we have our X, Y, Z inputs and our legs have all made it into the Simulink model. I can open that up. I can open that up and all of our variables, all of our parameters that we selected to export have all made it into our Simulink model and ready to be ready to be used. So just to summarize, uh, the MapleSim Connector provides users with a smooth integration of MapleSim models into their existing workflow within MATLAB and Simulink. Model setup is easy and intuitive, and the Maple app provides a simple user-friendly export process that enables you to quickly generate code. And if you need something a little bit more custom, the Maple API can let you do that too. Thanks again for listening today.